Hello folks and welcome to today's Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. This week we're up here on Lake James. It's late fall and it's a beautiful day out today. We don't have much wind, a little bit of rain, but to me it's a beautiful day because I'm getting to come out here and go fishing for a few hours today. On today's show we're going to try to show you some techniques that we use to catch white perch. Now a lot of you guys you, know, you probably don't want to fish for these this type of fish, but White perch is a very tasty fish if you enjoy eating fish. And lately, over the past few years, Lake James has produced some really good, you know, one, two pound uh, white perch. So we're going to try to get on some of these perch, show you a few techniques and how we catch them. Maybe you can come up here and do it too. So stick around, don't go away. We'll be right back on today's Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. <laughs> folks we're all rigged up and ready to go if you take a look out back I don't know if you can see it on camera I'll get back all the way from the camera here but I, I marked an area with an orange marker back there in the process of setting up my rod and getting ready I came over an area where I marked a lot of fish a school of fish down there that I'm going to want to make sure that I pull my lines over and see if I can't get a response off many of them but that's a good thing to do if you if you have a GPS you can mark a wayport on the GPS where you find the fish at or if not just go ahead and put you out a marker because them could that could be a valuable asset to you when you're out fishing them could be real active fish you don't want to pass it up so just remember that well we got our first fish on here folks I don't know what it is but he just hit oh look at that nice white perch there we go that's the kind of white perch we're looking for right there that's a nice fish We'll catch a bunch of them, bring them home. Be some good eating right there. They're a real succulent fish and they're just great. We change our strategy a little bit and what I've done now is I'm fishing the schools of fish instead of just trying to drift over them, give them a little bit more time to, to bite. And I'm thinking maybe these fish are just kind of in a shutdown mode because tomorrow we're supposed to get a cold front coming in. Oh, there's another one right there. So anyways, it looks like we're on the fish. We'll see what happens. Let me go over here and get this baited back up. And hopefully that fish will come back and hit it again. But um, if we can catch a boatload of them, there'll be some good eating. Basically, all I'm doing is uh, finding schools of fish out here and setting up on top of them. I'm using some minnows and some night crawlers. And these fish are, they're down 22 20 to 25 feet. And what I've got here is I've got just a number, a number six gold hook with my minnow on there. And then I've got kind of like our, our drift fishing technique that we use. I've got a, an ounce sinker on there, and this is kind of like a trolling sinker. A lot of these folks right here use these weights for um, flounder fishing. And I got a swivel on there, so I'm just letting that down, pulling it about a foot off the bottom. And that's what seems to be working best for me right now. 
All right, just hooked on to another one here. Well, I know what it is. Don't feel as big as him last one, but he's big enough to he's big enough to take home. Man, that school just seems like it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, there's so many fish down there right now, folks, that I can't tell. You know, I was talking to you a little earlier about being able to watch your sinker on your depth finder and know exactly where you are and that you're getting your bait right down in there. And there's so many fish down there right now, I can't tell the difference between my, uh, my sinker and my bait and the fish that are in the school right there. I mean, it's about just one right after the other. I, whoa, there he is. I just put that minnow down and brought it up. Bang. Oh, yeah. Oh, biggest one of the day. Look at that big fat guy with you. Folks, you need to come up here to Lake James, get you some of these big old white perch. These things have only just really been coming along here over the past few years, and they're such a vicious fish uh, that they, they eat so much. I mean, they're, like, they're not like scavengers, but it's like a bunch of piranhas, you know, when you put a bait down. I mean, we've had them two or three at a time follow the bait with the fish, uh, with the bait in its mouth up to the top of the boat. That's how vicious they are when they, when they do start feeding. So I guess that's why they get so big so quick. But um, anyhow, as long as they're gonna keep feeding, we're gonna keep on catching. Well, that was on a minnow. Whoa, there's another one. There's another one. Man, I haven't had a chance. I'm gonna have to, now I got two poles out of the water. I'm not gonna complain. But boy, this is fun. Never seen a grown man having so much fun. All right. I'm gonna try to head back toward my marker. It doesn't matter. My marker is up here probably, let's see, I'd say probably about 25 to 30 yards away from me. I'm getting the hit right there now. I just put that pole down. About 25 to 30 yards from me, but the fish are just all in this area. So as long as I keep an idea where my marker is, I know I'll stay on the fish. I wonder if he got my minnow. Sometimes you gotta watch your bait constantly because they will. They'll come along and they'll just grab your bait right off your hook. Before you ever know what's going on. I'm using a, uh, what they call a freeliner rod. It's a uh, medium to light action. And I like this type of rod for this kind of fishing because if I decide to go trolling or drifting, I've got a rod that will suit all them needs. And then I've also got a, just enough tip on it so that in a case like this, it kind of sets the hook for me a lot of times. I'm just barely off the bottom. One thing you need to remember is that when you do set your, your line down, don't set it down with a broad in your hand because what's going to end up happening is that you're going to go all the way to the bottom and what's going to happen when you set that rod down? You're going to have six feet of line, five to six feet of line, and a lot of times that's going to go right back to the bottom. So I just set my rod in the holder and I just wind it up until it gets to be where I want it to be. And I like to try to keep this with, with the white perch because they're kind of a bottom feeding fish. Uh, I, I, I like to keep mine probably about a foot off the bottom. Whoa, that's a little bit bigger white perch right there. Don't like it anyway, he's a fighter. Here we go, another one. Yeah. I'll take a whole boatload of these. Gonna be some fine eating. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys, they'll go down to a place like Lake Wiley and they'll catch these fish two or three, four at a time. And, uh, you know, they got some guides down there that'll take them down there, show them how to do this. And it's nothing to catch two or three, four fish at a time down there. I can't stress enough how important it is to stay on the fish. You look on the depth finder. And that picture I just showed you, you could see that I'm on the fish. I'm on a big school of fish. And it's real important to stay on them. If you don't stay on the fish, you're not gonna catch them. So you've gotta remember that. It's boat control, boat control, boat control is the main thing you have to worry about when you're on a school of fish like this. You get off that school and they're, they're, and they're done biting. And sometimes that school will move away. 
it's really difficult because I don't have a partner out here today to help me. So, you know, having to fight the wind, real fishing, well, that's a real tough job. But, you know, having to reel the fish in, keep the boat on my marker and stay on the fish, it's a little difficult. But you can do it with a little bit of uh, a little bit of experience and just a little bit of coming out and just, uh, uh, just you know, learning how to use your equipment. That's what it's all about. This segment of Outdoor Sportsman's Television is brought to you by Linux of Kannapolis and Charlotte, South Park Medical Clinic, and also by Wilson Creek Outfitters. All right, well, we got another one. Small one. Just the right eating size. Took a minnow. But uh, we'll just throw him back in. He's a little bit too small. In case you're wondering what that was all about, that's what happens when you stick yourself with a hook. Trying to stay right here on this area right here where the fish are. Try to take another one. It seems to slow down a little bit, but that really, to be honest with you, is the nature of white perch. That's why you gotta kinda stay on them and keep moving with them because they will they will slow down. There's another one. There's another fish right there. Unlike these fish that aren't slowing down. Another small one. Might get into a bunch of small fish. Well everybody, we had a pretty good day today. We caught a, a, a bunch of nice white perch out there on Lake James. I want to take you a minute just to show you how I fillet them. I'm going to get ready to fillet these fish out, get ready to put them in the freezer, and, and have a, a real good meal out of them here one day. So I want to take and show you how I fillet them. A lot of people have different ways, but this is just how I do it. And, and if you like the way I do it, it might work good for you. All right. The first thing I'll do is I'll take the fish and I'll lay them down like so. And I take my knife and I'll just come right behind his side fin like that and I'll make a cut just like so until I reach his backbone and then from that point on I'll take my knife and I'll just come up through here like this touching his backbone until I don't feel it no more and then just peel that right off take your knife and just come in here work it down the rib cage and a lot of guys will just cut that rib cage right out but I like to trim it out on the white perch because you don't get a lot of meat on them to begin with but what you do get is really good. And when you get down there, cut that off like so. Come back with your knife and just fillet them right out of it. Now that's not a very big fillet, but you take yourself and you get a half a dozen of them, fry them up, and they're really good. Show you how to do the other side. Some, for me, this side's a little bit easier. I don't know why. It might be because of the way I, I do this, but I'll just come down like so. Follow all the way down his rib cage. Come down. Now sometimes I'll miss and I'll cut him off the tail. Some guys will leave it and that will allow you to have a little bit of a holding uh, grip handle right there to hold the fish. Come down like this, we're going to get a better fillet out of this one. And that's how, that's how easy they fillet out and you get you a nice fillet just like that. It's easy to do. It's not hard to learn. I had to teach myself. Nobody taught me how to fillet them. But when, once you get good at it, you can basically do any fish that way and you can pretty much go through them uh, pretty quick especially if you have a buddy that's going to help most buddies you know they'll help you catch them but they won't help you clean them <laughs>